All right, I'm here with Adam Bush, the producer from Kids on the Move. How are you doing today, hey, Adam? It? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm excited to chat with you a little bit, find out what you're doing over there. I heard you just finished up with Church on the Move live. And um, how did that go? How did something like that happen? It, it was good. Uh, once a year, we have a big family experience in the main auditorium. We call it KOTM Live. And basically, um, the, the way we word it is that the Kids on the Move team is taking over the main auditorium and um so we you if you're an adult if you're a parent you get to experience church in the main auditorium the way that your kids do and so we have the we have the kids on the move band we sing kids on the move songs from our new album um we uh, pastor gabe our uh, children's pastor and our director he uh, he preaches we do sketches we we've got puppets um you know the, the whole nine yards and so it's 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 just a really fun experience um for, especially for parents, but for the whole church to be able to uh, um, just see church the way that our kids do every week. Nice. I love it. That sounds so exciting. So for other churches, I mean, I would love to do a Kids on the Move Live. That would be so much fun. How do I approach something like that? How do you get ready for it and do a production of that size? What's something that some churches out there could really learn from you? You know, we do it once a year, and and that's purposeful. I mean, it's a it's a it's a, a really big endeavor for the church because it involves not only the children's ministry staff, but but the production staff and the performing arts staff in our church as well. Um, but but one of the big reasons we only do it once a year is we really want to showcase to parents what we've done throughout the year for their kids. Not specifically everything we've taught, as much as um, you know, we want to put our best foot forward. We want to we want to. Uh, uh, show them some of the things that have really worked well for us in teaching their kids. Um, uh, I think the best way to explain it is with the sketch that we did. And we talked about temptation. Um, our, our main point, our big answer this week was temptation is always a trap. That's something we've taught before. And uh, it's uh, obviously something that's very relevant, not only to kids, but to adults. And it's something that we were able to communicate in a way that we really liked. And that was with um, a sketch that involved, um, I don't want to give the whole thing away because you'll be able to watch it, but it's a sketch that involved one of our guys uh, being tempted by something and in the end, he ended up in a trap. And we've done it before. And so what we did was we just expanded that sketch and uh, the service really to um, be able to showcase something that we really, really liked and uh, that we felt worked out really well for the kids. And so I, I would say that's one of the, that's one of the biggest things is, um, it, it's not really a time for us to try something new. It's not really a time for us to to um, do something that um, uh, you know maybe try a, a type of storytelling that we haven't done before. Um, it's really the time to to show parents what is actually happening on a week to week basis. Now, it's bigger. I mean, it, it has to be bigger. It's it's in a bigger auditorium, and it, it's just a bigger deal. But but for the most part, we are showing them exactly what their kids get every single week. Mm -hmm. That's great. So then as a parent, they can come in and they can see really the best of what you have. Yeah. I mean, we want them to have an awesome, an awesome time and, and it's a family experience. It's not just for kids. And so, um, you know, we, we did a few sketches and, uh, and not all the humor is just for kids. It's, it's designed and it's rewritten to include adults. Um, because we want everyone to have a great time. And ultimately we want, um, everyone from, you know, from, uh, five years old all the way up to grandparents to understand what, what we're saying and to walk away knowing the truth of God's word. Uh, we don't want them leaving saying, Oh, that's really cute. What they did. We really want them to understand that temptation is always a trap and, and have a great time, um, learning that lesson right along with us. So, uh, it, it's a, it's an, awesome experience for everybody involved at least that that's our goal right i love that so what i'm hearing you say is maybe not to try and do it too often just really put all of your eggs in the one basket and really make it amazing and go out of the box but then what are some other things that maybe people should know to get ready for an event like that what are some behind the scenes stuff that you might be able to help people with in terms of production um this is a, a different beast than what we do every week um, because of the, if you've seen the, the Church on the Move Auditorium, it's a large auditorium and it's got a whole production staff dedicated to just, um, to just working 
on that room and 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 i should say for the events that are in that room it's headed up by an amazing production manager his name's andrew stone and he um he's he's communication is his top priority and so where we have found that we've gotten in, in trouble is when we have not communicated what needed to be communicated uh in the right amount of time to the right people and often we one of the questions that we get um, that we get a lot is 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 how are you able to pull off these big events on a, on a week-to-week basis and um, how are you able to get from the point of I have an idea to actually pulling it off in your services because the kids on the move auditorium is is it's not as big as our main auditorium but it is a large auditorium that also has a production staff running it and where we've gotten in trouble is when we have assumed too much or we haven't communicated exactly what needs to be communicated to those production managers and um uh, it, it's 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 amazing how how easily you will forget or or you will disregard one key piece of information and not get it to the people who need it and in that rehearsal or in your big event you have a major flop uh andrew i'll refer to kind of what he says he, he told me this a long time ago he says if you have problems in your service if something goes wrong it's not it's it's typically not because of the actual service it's because of the preparation that you did leading up to the service and so for kids on the move live that's obviously a huge deal for us um we we've got to make sure that um well in advance we know what we're doing stage set wise that we know what we're doing theme wise that the music guys know what songs they're singing so they can do their job um that we know what sketches we're doing the uh, the, the whole the whole thing um if you don't do that it's it's not going to work and uh, you're not going to get the outcome that you want that's that's whenever you are on the other side of the the event and you're like man I, I had it i had an idea of what this could have been and it really really didn't come together like that and it's fast you're you're on to the next thing as you know in church world there's not really any going back there's only moving forward and so um that's kind of the biggest lessons i've learned that's great. I love that. So taking one big event and really taking the best of what you have and then making sure that you plan ahead of time and communicate to everybody who needs that. And I'm assuming that you guys do quite a few uh, run throughs and things like that. How long Well, when do you start preparing for an event of this size? And then how many uh, run throughs and things do you do? And when do you start really running through the whole production? Like how much in advance of the actual night? Well, we know that we're going to do one Kids on the Move Live in November. Um, I, we've done two so far. And so we knew, you know, months ahead of time last year and then the same thing this year. And that all comes from Pastor George. He's the one who tells us when we're going to have it in the weekend. And so uh, we have plenty of time to prepare. And then Pastor Gabe is obviously the one who's going to tell us what we're talking about. And and typically he's he has something on his heart months ago. And so... Um, you know, sometime in July or August, he's saying, I'm thinking we're going to talk about this. And, um, um, and, and so that gets our brains working just in regards to what we've done musically and what we've done sketch wise. Now things change and, um, you know, there's a plethora of different reasons why things would change, but this, for this kids on the move live, we were actually going to talk about something different, um, with a different subject matter. And as we got into the actual planning of the service, it wasn't working. And, and, and what we felt we were trying to communicate and the way we were trying to do it in the sketches, it, it just wasn't it just wasn't clicking. And so it was actually just a few weeks ago that we said, you know what, we, we've got, we need to change it. And, and that's when we decided to talk about how temptation is always a trap. Now, kind of bouncing around here, set-wise, because of the set that we wanted to do and how grand it was for this you got a lot of people involved a lot of people who are who are building who are designing and who are printing all that that's got to be done you got to get that going months in advance and it's i i hopefully sound like i know what i'm talking about but this all comes from our production manager andrew he he is and i'll, and I'll tell you how you can um you can follow his blog here in a second but he's he's been on the road he's been I think 15 plus years on the road production managing for huge bands like third day and 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 the just, just just all these guys who have huge you know stadium tours um 
he, he's the, he's the one, he's the one that's knocking on my door and be like, what are we doing, man? What are, you know, what are, we, it's, it's meeting time. And so I know what it's like to be on the other side of things. And you, um, I'll, I'll say just like to be on the creative side of things and where you're, you're dreaming and you're hoping and you're blue skying things. And you, you want to do this, you want to do this, but then you, you've got Andrew over here and he's, he's saying, okay, that's great. But how are we going to pull it off? And do we have enough time? And so, um, you know, several months ago, he and I spent a couple of, couple of, uh, or uh, many, many meetings, many hours in his office, drawing up what the stage set would look like. And then once we decided how we wanted it to look, you take it back. You got a lot of people involved. So you take it back to Pastor Gabe and make sure that he likes it or if he has any tweaks or you, you want to make sure it works for the sketches. It goes back to Andrew, it goes back and back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually it's like, how are we going to pull this off? And so about, I would say a month ago, that's when we really started building and designing and printing. Um, there are always last minute things, but your goal is really that the week of you've got everything in place. As far as rehearsal goes, we take our cue from him. Um, he ha- he heads all of that up. And so we had a rehearsal. Um, we did a um, kind of a walkthrough the Tuesday before um, to make sure that puppeteering wise it worked, to make sure that where I stood hosting the service would work um, and that... Um, everything on the stage was was um, um, uh, uh, exactly where it's going to be. So we knew how everything was going to work. Um, Thursday night, band rehearses all the songs. Um, these are songs that are not uncommon to them, so it wasn't too hard. They they ran it for about, I think, three, four hours. After that, we, um, we ran through sketches. Um, we had four total sketches for the whole service. And uh, we made tweaks that night. The next morning we came in and we shortened them. And, and, and in that rehearsal, there are a lot of people involved watching it, people who do this at the church all the time. And so they're saying, I don't like that joke. This could, could be, this could be communicated better. This storytelling could be better. Yada, yada, things like that. We go back. We come back Friday. We ran it three times. We came back on Saturday before service. We ran it twice. And then we did it on Saturday nights. You do a quick, um, you know, um, uh, technical check to make sure that everything, um, is working on, uh, Sunday morning. And, and then you run it, you do it two more times and he, and then it's over. It's over like that. I know you put all that work into it and then you're like, wow, how did that happen just now in just one weekend? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it is a blur. It's a, you know, there's a lot of writing, a lot of late nights. Um, but in the end, it's just like, whoa, that was, uh, sort of a whirlwind and it's all over now. Yeah, I can see that. Well, I think you've given us a lot of great information. And I'm seeing that, you know, you're taking one big event. This is a great opportunity to really connect the big church with the kids church. Yeah. And then also planning and communication, um, talking a little bit about vision, making sure that from the, the vision from the top is coming all the way down and you're reaching your goals. Like when you had your goals and then you weren't quite meeting those goals of what message you were communicating and being willing to be flexible and just adjust. And also I'm hearing a little bit about evaluation, talking about some evaluation from those people who do yeah. stuff in your church really well and Definitely. getting their feedback. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just hard work. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just hard work. It's um, there's no there's no secret to the magic. The magic is that it there's a lot of a lot of hard work. It's I, I think it's and and everything I'm talking about is just what we've learned and what works best for us. But it's um it's it's huge listening to those people who know what they're doing. Uh, you know these guys in the in the production world who know what they're doing. These guys on the creative side who know what they're doing, the, the storytellers who know how to tell a story, um, listening to all of those people, getting their input, and then um, and then evaluating and making changes. Right. Well, if people want to check out Church on the Move Live, how would they uh, find it? How would they um, be able to check that out? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple of different things. We've got a couple of different websites. Number one, we've got a website called Seeds, and it's uh, seeds.churchonthemove.com. And on that website, you can get all the free resources that we upload um, that we actually use at our church. And so songs, lyric videos, uh, curriculum, series, videos, and, and it includes adult service, youth services, and kids services. And so um, you can actually uh, download a ton of stuff from us. Um, you can also go to churchonthemove.com, and there you can watch our services on Vimeo, and there's a link to it. You can check out Kids on the Move Live right there. You can look at last year's, or um, you can watch uh, this year's. 
All right, great. Well, thank you yeah. very much, Adam. And it was great to talk to you. It's exciting to you see too. what you guys are doing over there in Good Oklahoma. Luck. And I uh, look forward to connecting with you again soon. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, Adam. Bye. -bye. February 23rd and 24th, 2012 is Napkin, a children and family pastors and leaders conference. This is an event for your whole team that's not just about ideas, but making ideas happen. Speakers include Jim Weidman, Associate Pastor at World Christian Church and Pioneer of Children's Ministry. Benny Perez, Author, Church Planner, and Lead Pastor of The Church at South Las Vegas. Dave and Becky Wakerly, Children's Pastors at Hillsong, Sydney. Michael Rosales, Napkin Conference Director and Children's Pastor at The Church at South Las Vegas. Ryan Frank, Executive Director of Kids Matter and Awana, as well as Editor-in-Chief of K Magazine and Sam Luce, avid blogger and children's pastor of Redeemer Church in Utica, New York. Registration is going on right now, so register your team today at thenapkinconference.com. Napkin Conference, taking your ideas off the napkin and into reality.